Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer and it is the second stage of creating the new fleet against the Lightning Hoods and this next stage is basically around the Marine Nationale, the French Navy. Now they join them together with the Italian Navy as I'd said in the previous video because there's certain similarities but they are also somewhat different um, design concepts on their ship um, in other areas around guns etc I feel so it's a nice sort of different yet complementary group of ships so first of all the plans before I do a bit of a uh, talk about history etc the plan is to build um, a suite of um, ships so uh, destroyer cruiser maybe a, a battle cruiser light battleship and then a heavy battleship and some submarines and um, I have I, I'll say now I've, I've sort of earmarked and tested a few different guns and missile systems uh, to potentially build and um, I think for historical reasons as well as interest on the build I've decided to build a uh, the fan, la fantis, uh, sorry, start again Le fantastic um, destroyer and again one little uh, uh, thing to say if I get the words wrong on in French well tough it's better than calling them all Dave anyway anyway the the fantastic destroyer the most probably the um, Emile Bertin um, cr light cruiser, uh, maybe a Suffren heavy cruiser. Um, then they're looking at the Dunkirk battleships. Um, maybe there may be a, something like the Colbert cruiser, which was a missile cruiser, and some of the later ones as well. But that's the starting plan I've got in my head for ships. So. Um, I'm going to start the build with the Fantastic, and so a little bit of history, so look in the description for a uh, time code if you just want to skip ahead to me trying to destroy a load of um, uh, lightning hoods. So it's going to be aimed at basically uh, taking on likelihoods of the first two levels so up to normal level not expert if it can do expert then that's great so the fantastic there's a bit of a a, a discrepancy I find in history books and, and various writings about why the fantastic class was designed etc so to explain that the, the fantastic class is, is a large destroyer um, and when I say when it said large, it's about 2,500 tons displacement, um, 130 meters long, that sort of size. Now, when you think about it, it's, it's like, well, it doesn't sound that big. But contemporary destroyers, um, just after World War II, and even one of the uh, French's own adroit um, destroyer class was only about 600 tons and only about 80 meters long so you can see there's a substantial change in size and so what prompted this size this is where there's a little bit of a um, uh, discrepancy in that the the uh, fantastic is is sort of attributed to being built because of the Condottieri cruiser of the Italian um, but and then the Condottieri cruiser is supposed to have been built because of the fantastic well it's sort of true but not true the main change um, on the build was the fantastic was getting near the end of a series of this class starting with the Chacal and the Goupard class which was in the 1920s and they were the first ones that pushed the 2000 200 2300 ton um, size and very high speed for the destroyers so they were the first one the fantastic wasn't built until the 1930s um, so the Condottieri was sort of built to um, compete against this class of ships but potentially the earlier versions not the fantastic so it's sort of right but at the same time sort of not but the Fantastic, or the, the earlier Chacal and Goupard, was not built to compete against the Condottieri because they hadn't been built yet. They were actually 
uh, built to com against the Italian uh, destroyer then being b built, which was the um, uh, Lyon, I think it was, which had eight four-inch guns and was about 1,500, 1,600 tons. So it was a large destroyer for the time. So it sort of started this size and power creep in the destroyer bracket in the Mediterranean. So, yes, it was Lyon uh, that started it. That built up the Chacal and the Goupard, which were, um, um, along with the Fantastique, they were armed with five single-mounted um, 5.1, 5.4. They started at 5.1, but they become a 5.4 inch. So they were slightly higher guns than the Italian cruisers, Italian destroyers, but had higher speed. Um, but neither, none of them had any armour because they're destroyers. So you don't really put armour on on them. So that was the the history as to why they were built and um, the fantastic along with some of its sister ships had quite a good history in World War II. They were part of the Vichy naval forces for most of the war until um, uh, basically North Africa was invaded by the US and at that point the captured ships were sent to Casablanca and then over to America over to the Boston shipyards where they were rebuilt and uh, I wouldn't say rebuilt, they were, yeah, rearmed, should we say. The main guns and the primary AA guns were kept, but then a lot of the um, Hotchkiss and other 37mm were replaced with Bofors and um, Eulichen 20mm. So uh, that's the build that I'm going to be building, is going for that after 1943 um 42 43 build where it'd been to america and was now part of the free french navy and was then able to partake in places like everything from normandy and and um, um it rest of the um the mediterranean so they did have a good history and they did actually survive the wars a few of them and were part of uh the french navy until i think about the 1950s 1960s i think maybe the last 1950s certainly um, so these will be the first of the French Marine Nationale and yeah they will hopefully then support the other cruisers um, and destroyers acting in the uh, um, anti-submarine warfare. Another couple of interesting just points before we finish. After the rebuild in um, America, this is again about the size issue the americans actually classed then the fantastic as a light cruiser rather than a destroyer and it was put into cruiser squadrons and not destroyer squadrons because of its size um, but it still had a good fantastic speed about 30 i think about 37 38 knots um, so it still kept its speed even with all the extra weight that they put put on it as you can see the ship is fairly much complete um, the paint scheme I did a little bit of looking around couldn't find a camouflage scheme for French Navy but this blue and light grey was um, seemed to be a marine nationale prior to World War II so I thought that looks like a reasonable paint scheme for the uh, uh, French ships going forward so we'll we'll go with that but before I do a final review and some combat testing I did a little bit of work on the engines on this one compared on the steam engines compared to the previous um, Italian ones just to get a slightly more responsive build so just to show what I've done uh, we've got the four boilers and in this room here we've got all of the boiler controls and it's all based upon a couple of requirements and or issues uh, the first thing is that whether shields are on or off now something that people sometimes don't realize with the speeds is with the steam controllers if i turn these on it's got a speed and an approximate power but if you put a power load on such as shields if it gets um, it actually because it's putting load it actually reduces your rpm and your potential amount of power 
so although it says 800 and two engines 1600 I'm not necessarily going to get 1600 because as the the uh, load is put onto the uh, uh, engine it reduces anyway so you have to allow for if shields have been turned on when you're doing your setting your burn rates so lots of controllers here first of all I've got controllers which just say you know if I'm not going forward uh, set it to zero if I'm at way, my waypoint just turn the uh, boilers off uh, second one if it is I come along to go forward and there's no enemy around then we go with the speed we've got now which is about a 4% build which will take us around about 9-10 meters a second just as a, a cruise sort of speed now these two are the responsive ones for uh, the based around is the enemy within 1500 meters so if they're within 1500 meters and my speed is at least 23 meters a, uh, a second then set it to 15 percent which is we'll do that speed with half shields this the accelerator to just get us there and auto allow for shields so if the speed goes below 23 meters a second um, and it's still going forward and the distance the enemy is 1500 Put the burn rate up to 22 now what this means is it will initially put the burn rate to 22 to accelerate up to um, the 23 meters a second it will then cut the burn rate down to 15 percent and if the speed should drop below 23 go back up to 22 so it will uh, sorry go up yeah 22 percent which would push it above 23 so it will start to bounce between 22 and 15 percent not ideal but that should um, work. I might might give it a little bit so it doesn't bounce around too quickly on this. But I'll I'll set that up in a and test it. The final one is my full full speed. This is a thirty three percent, which basically is enough to um, power it up to about you know it's full speed on the on the boilers and just get close to the enemy no matter what. Um, so this it it, it um, if the shields do go to full maximum power it will reduce speed slightly but generally it will go at maximum speed at this point um, which is about uh, 38 meters a second at this time um, with the build we've got here before I go into the combat testing a quick review of the ship the La Fantastique uh, class of large destroyer it is very large um, 128 meters uh, long and 13 wide which is slightly shorter than the real ship but this cost of 143 materials there is there's a lot of um, uh, weaponry and uh, a, a lot of missiles the torpedoes add a lot on their own and missile defenses uh, but it, it is definitely cruiser cost of a ship not a your typical destroyer but armament wise first of all we have five of these 140 mil guns the original was a uh, 100 138 but 140 is close and the uh, basic shell I've used on here now I'm going for the French with a fairly heavy hitting shell rather than armor piercing the um, the uh, Italians are going to use more armor piercing style and the French ones I'm going to use this heavy head to do a little bit more external damage so they're, they're quite a, a heavy hitting but high muscle velocity and a bit of EMP against lightning hoods is also not a bad thing so yeah this is the the basic um, shell used in all the guns just to give a plenty of range and uh, as I say a good velocity and a nice reasonable hard hit uh, against light armor uh, lightly armored targets I think that will that will work out well against the uh, lightning hoods uh, plenty of these 20 millimeter guns dotted around uh, I think I've got uh, let's see three per side effectively and one in the center as 
I described in, in some of your um, earlier talk, when it went to Boston, it was fitted with lots of about 20 or so 20 millimeter Olicans. So this sort of replaces the Olicans by putting them into uh, uh, quad barrels. Then we do have the 40 mil buffers with a, a quad on the top and a couple of jewels. And these are set to really only go against aerial targets at about 1200 meters. And, and the uh, 20 mils will only attack between six, up to about 600 meters. I think, uh, yeah, roughly 600. And then the torpedoes. So we've got some two triple launchers aiming at the sides, um, fairly heavy hitting, a little e EMP. They're quite long range. They, they, uh, the primary on this was to get a nice bit of range going on these. So they've got a, a long distance hit. Um, uh, they're a little bit bigger than the ones I use on the Italian uh, ships, uh, but that's, as I say, on purpose to get a nice long-range uh, effect on them. Uh, other than that, the ship is walkable. I've tried to make it, I haven't done an, a full interior, but it is fully walkable. Um, you can come out of the bridge, down the ladders, into this little connection area, and then you've got uh, the room into the gun plotting room, which is basically the AI, and then a little way down here down the the ladders or the, the stairs and then you've got way into the armory and then through to the boiler room and the engine room and we have four boilers for redundancy and these are all the control blocks that control what burn rate the um, the boilers will uh, use and this is the engine room with two propeller shafts going through six gearboxes through to the end. I actually don't need those doors there, but never mind. I'll leave them there for the moment. Uh, through underneath the main guns at the rear and the uh, and chute, going through to the back to these five meter propellers, which are actually overlapping offsets. It's the only way I could actually get them to fit. Uh, for various reasons, I couldn't, it also looked weird. I couldn't uh, get the propeller shafts to traverse all the way exactly where I wanted but it works and um, you know they do uh, work quite nicely I should say one last final um, weapon is some uh, mine uh, mines here so this is effectively um, the depth charges they are designed really sweetly for very slow and or underwater targets um, just to fire out a, a, a magnetic mine to try and get any um, uh, submarines. So that is the basic Fantastic, which I will put up in the forums because I still can't access the Steam Workshop at the moment. So I will try and get it up onto the forums and um, keep an eye out for the post in the forums. Okay. Now for some combat testing, and for those that skip straight to this point, we the aim is that this will be fighting with other ships, um, but mainly against the lightning hoods of the easy and regular level, I think, um, in general. So we'll put it on its own, and it will be quite good against planes, I'm hoping. But we'll start it off with uh, a couple of ships just to see how it um, manages to survive and uh, let's give it a bit of a battle. Guns are initially firing. Let me just despawn this other base. There we go. So it's only. Only the fantastic now that is uh, being in combat. So hopefully the the I'm going to put some of the these up here so I can see what's happening. So the shields are doing a reasonable job. It's got strength about strength four laser scatter shields dotted around with a couple of um, I think a strength six around the AI bridge area. 
Uh, those guns seem to be doing a reasonable job there. Let's go and have a look how they're hitting. Yeah, they're doing a, a reasonable job against this Ampere. They seem to be picking off the bits and yeah, they despawned that. It got up to its a good 27 meters a second speed as well. Um, that was during, during the chase part of its attack where it's trying to close and get within 1500 meters. It now should be trying to close on that uh, Voltar. It's within 1500 meters, yeah, so it'll stay around, uh, it'll go down to about 22, 23 meters a second. It'll try and keep it around that speed. Uh, it's deciding not to fire though at that Voltar for some reason at the moment. I think potentially that Volta is actually too small a ship. I've set the, the guns only to fire at uh, larger vessels. Yeah, the 20 mils firing at it. But not the main guns. I might just have to quickly change their size limit on the gun. So gun size limit's been changed to 150. Uh, blocks. It was set at 500, uh, so uh, that obviously Voltar was a bit small. Let's try some planes. So I think a uh, Surge and a Firefly will be a couple of ships, that, uh, aircraft that will be commonly up against with the White Flayers. So the AA guns are having a, a go at the uh, enemy. We'll just make sure that our missile, anti-missile is working. Yep, it is firing the anti-missile out, which is good. The Firefly is a little blinky little uh, ship, uh, to say the least, but it's we're concentrating on the surge first. Let's get me into a better place where I can see everything. Shields are up by the looks of it. Using a lot of ammo, but um, that's because of all the missiles, so it's using quite a few missile um, interceptors. So at the moment it's, it's relying primarily on guns to, well exclusively on guns, to uh, take out flying targets. Um, in the future we'll create some um, missile armed ships, but yep, yeah, it's taken them out okay. So it's generally working against flying targets as well as sea targets. So um, if it was putting a couple of these or maybe um, defending say a, 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 a cruiser or a Dunkirk battleship or is that a battle cruiser? Anyway, if it's uh, defending some of the other ships I think this could do very well um, against the Lightning Hoods. So that's it for this little um, ship, I think, for the moment. Successfully built, successfully combat tested. Not very many changes have been needed from the basic build. It is a bit expensive. That's my only, um, I wouldn't say a problem, but I don't think that's at this stage of the game. This is no longer a starter ship. This is, um, you know, a, a mid game. So resources are not as critical as some others. But uh, yeah, 141k uh, is quite expensive for what is a. It really it's a light cruiser, although it was classed as a large destroyer. This is bigger than some cruisers that I have built in the game so far. Any comments? down please leave them down below um maybe what do you think dunkirk i'm i'm thinking nick building the uh well maybe doing an italian ship but uh for the french doing the um emile bertin or the dunkirk seems to be a i think would be a 
a good ship um, to give a bit of muscle in the area to, to really um, have a go at the enemy. And also, I'm intrigued by the whole forward quad guns um, on a, a battleship battle cruiser as well. They both sort of intrigue me somewhat. As well, there's quite a bit of history in that particular ship, so that gives me something to talk about, which I never seem to have a problem talking about history in ships. I enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the, the, me talking about history. I'm going to do it more as I go through builds because some people are enjoying that part. So I will keep on doing that. Until next time, keep playing the game and have fun.